My name's George Scott and I'm a racehorse trainer based in Newmarket. Hello, Hello mate. mate. It's Great. like Chelsea Garden Show out here, isn't it? It's lovely. Yeah, I mean, I'm a bit of a green, what's it, green finger? This has got nothing to do with you. You yeah. haven't done any of this. It's my long-suffering assistant. Yeah. So it's her, her labour of love. George and I met years ago. It was one of these things where, you know, someone new and similar age rolls into town and you become, you normally meet in the pub and just sort of get on. But Charlie and I wouldn't have been good friends from the start, but as, as we've kind of got deeper into this together, we've, we've used each other as a sounding board. I'd just come back from Australia, and he was working for Michael Bell. He was this quite so chippy, arrogant, you know, thought he knew the, thought he knew the lot, and we immediately got on very well. So um, you cut your cloth on this side of the town. One, one, of my, one of my friends came actually, who's, who's not, he's not particularly horsey, but he kind of gets it and just gets winding me up. And he said, this is like being in, this is like sort of being sort of Fulham-esque, Putney sort of thing. And then the other side of town's like the King's Road. <laughs> but we started in the same yard. Yeah, no, we did. We just both... down there. But let's just explain, we are on what they call the Hamilton Road side of town. Where we're going later, where I am, is over on the Berry Road side of town. And they're very different. Bizarrely, considering they're both in the same place, they are completely different places to train. Sure. This side is absolutely flat as a pancake, which is good for some things, not so good for others. The other side of town, Warren Hill, very, very steep hill. I mean, when I was over here, I remember hating the steady canters, but absolutely loving all the gallops over right. here. And I think they're actually better than the Lime Kills, which is the most famous gallops in Newmarket. Uh, how do you find? Yeah, no, I actually, you've actually hit the nail on the head from our point of view. If you're training on the flat the whole time, you've got to go faster and further. We all know we're dealing with a, with a race or a, a young flat racehorse. They're not the most durable, and therefore it's sort of contradictory to want to go fast all the time and, and cover a lot of distance. And what's lovely about this side of town is, is that it's quiet, you know. There's, you know, if you've got fillies and things like that, they don't need to go out into the hustle and bustle of, um, of Warren Hill. There's definitely positive, big positives to being on this side of town. But I think really fundamentally, the tried and tested route of training racehorses that has, that has stood the test of time with the, some of the greatest horses that have ever stepped foot on this planet have gone up Warren Hill. Yeah. And they've gone up there twice yeah. as a routine. Yeah. Frankel. Enable, yeah. Prince yeah. of Aaron. <laughs> I got into racing just through horses, really. I grew up on a farm in Shropshire, and uh, my mum always rode, always had hunters and things like that, so I, I, I always took a keen interest. Had a few ponies, which were a disaster, and then went, really went to school with no interest in racing whatsoever. But then quickly picked it, picked it up through school, and, and then that love of horses was then sort of came together and meshed together perfectly with the interest in, in racing and from leaving Harrow I went straight into uh, to work for Paul Nichols and, and went from there really. All right Charlie, well, this is part of Eve Lodge. We've got four sort of symmetrical barns here um, which, work, which works very well. It's, very, it's practical for, the, for a start and also it's good clean airflow with the out, out facing windows and the majority of the horses can get their heads in as well, so you can get their heads, heads out both ways. <laughs> One oh, of them kicking off. Absolute wrap. Uh, it's great vibes. Who's actually won um, the other day? Won the other day. She's uh, James Garfield's sister. We will um, never do. We've never done an interview where he hasn't mentioned James Garfield. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was a star. No, no, he's a good horse. What I, what I enjoy about this yard, in terms of it running, is that my office is is within a hundred yards of of any horse in the, sta in the stable. Yeah. And, and you know, when the lads, sometimes you know those big yards and they're down in the, in the corner boxes, yeah. no one can see what they're doing. And yeah. you know, just out, you know, you know, just some lads get a little bit lazy. But here I'm always out, I'm always there, I'm always annoying people, I'm always shouting down the barns. And you know, that seems to work, yeah. work well. Keep and the staff love it as well. Yeah. They're over the moon. Well, I mean, the mucking out, you know, what, the I'm around? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are. They, they do, to be fair. But the mucking outs, it's, 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 so it's efficient. Easier. It's efficient. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know, the, in these times, efficiency will save oh, big you. Big time. We have a wedding present here, um, which I, again, has somehow managed to sneak into my bar. And that was obviously 
a wedding What's present. What's he called? That's Cookie. A Cookie, that's a great name. Yeah, when we, when we rented the yard, we bought the treadmill with it. And it's not something that I've used in any, in any other yard before. You, sorry, you bought this? Yeah, well, we're actually buying it over a pr pr period of, okay. about, of about 19 years. I will own this um, by the time I retire. And how, so an exercise, how long would a horse exercise on here for? It completely for? depends, you know, we do, we have, eat, eat, so basically we have a sort of a girl that runs the treadmill. Yeah. And um, in the morning she comes in and with the assistant, we sit down and just quickly go through what, what they're doing. But they, you know, they might do, you know, they either do a sort of, they, basically an interval, an interval training program per morning. And then, and then just depends the speed, the gradient yeah. and the amount of time vary with each horse. So yeah, we come in here to the indoor ride. Which is, which is not something that I've had the luxury of for the first three years of my, my training career, if you like. But, you know, once you have these type of things, it's hard to then not have, have one. For the, the winters seem to be getting worse. And considering we're a spring summer game, you know, it's, it's, it's invaluable in the sense that horses can often tick over here in the winter when it's really cold or really, really wet would be more thing. I mean, I don't know about you, but I know your old boss, James Fanshawe, is one in particular, he doesn't like them to get wet if he can possibly, and Henry Cecil, not that I work for him, but I spent a lot of time trying to put into practice his operations at Warren Place was another one. Just, they did not like them getting wet, especially when you're out of the season. So this is fantastic. As expected, I thought I got a, a wonderful tour from our host. I thought the yard looks incredibly smart, a really welcoming place to come. If I was an owner, I'd be really impressed. The, the barns here are just beautifully airy. They felt fresh and clean. The, the horses all look really relaxed. I thought it was a lovely yard. He's doing really well and he, he rubs in my face almost every day that he's trained a group winner in England and I haven't, and that irritates the hell out of me. Right, George, welcome to my humble abode. Uh, this is Bedford House Stables. We moved here about a year and a bit ago, just before Royal Ascot last year. It's been our happy home for the last 14 months or so. We are a bit different to you. We're sort of slightly more spread out, but similar in that we, we've probably got about 110 boxes here, um, but we've got a similar number of horses, about 80 horses in at the moment. And then we have these amazing barns down here, which quite similar to yours, big, airy. You you're, trying to, you're, trying to be, you're trying to be very kind to say, oh yeah, well, no, they the are same, quite same, but different. Same, same, but different. We don't quite have the flower arrangement you have. No. A lot of box hedging. You were the, yeah. um, Jack will enjoy hurdling those when yeah. he grows up a bit. I've learned a lot about gardening having been here. I mean, yeah. I thought box blight was something very different. Talking on a serious note, how have you found the upkeep, the maintenance of such a big place? Because that sort of sort of pales into in insignificance, really, doesn't it? Do you know what? It was the hardest thing about moving here. Yeah. Because our place over at Saffron House Stables was brilliant because it was so easy to run. Sure. Whereas you come here, it's an incredible yard. It's an amazing place to be. But the responsibilities of being here after Luca had been here for 40 years, looked after it beautifully. I mean, it, you know, and then I come along, not a clue about gardening, not a clue about any of this. And the last thing I, want, you know, I wanted was to sort of watch the place crumble because we hadn't looked after it properly. I got one massive, massive bit of luck. And that is that my, who was my head guy, is a cool guy called Derek. And he has been my head man since from my first year until last year. And when we moved over here, he has been a star. The size of this place is just phenomenal, isn't it? We're moving out here into the paddocks. It's an oasis. Well, we're really lucky. Market. Like, it's, it's not easy like, to get paddock space like this. And after, after exercise, all the horses come out here to cool off. And you do but four lots? Do do we four do four lots, lots yeah. but only the first two pick. Okay. So first and second lot will pick grass. Yeah. If I tried to pick third and fourth lot, I'd have no staff. Yeah. So my mum, was a member of a syndicate called the Eclipse Partnership with a load of friends. And they had horses in training with Jeff Rag and a few other people. And I, my earliest memory is I remember going to Yarmouth Racecourse. We were the only owners there. And they had a filly called Sveltana in training with James Fanshawe. 
uh, and uh, she actually won first time out. Um, and I remember going, we got pictures at home of us collecting the prize. And I don't, I don't know what it was. I used to watch it on TV. Friends would come over from school at the weekends and want to play. And, and, you know, all I wanted to do was sit and watch Channel 4 racing. And I, I just completely caught my imagination. I fell in love with it. And I told my parents when I was eight years old that I wanted to be a jockey. And sadly, having a six foot, six and a half dad and a five foot, 11 mum, that was never going to happen. And so I said, right, well, I want to train. And I didn't even, I didn't have a clue what that even meant. I had no idea. But um, I followed a dream and was encouraged to follow a dream by my parents and got some fantastic jobs along the way and a lot of luck. And uh, bizarrely, age 34, I'm here and we're doing all right. And we all know the sort of atmosphere for these horses is key, isn't it? Well, they, that they can switch off during the day. Yeah. And, and they're not stressing. Because yeah. we know, we know uh, horses, they, they like to stress if they get given any opportunity. And that's what £1.6 million worth of horse looks like. Prize money looks like. Yeah, Absolutely what a star not. he's been for you. Prince, yeah, of, Prince Aaron. of Aaron. Yeah. He really has put you on the map. Yeah. So this, this is obviously something that if you had a billion, you'd you'd redo it all. So this is our version of your indoor arena. And this is our covered ride. Yeah. Um, we use this every lot. So the horses would all collect in here. So they pull out up there, sure. walk down here, and then they all come and collect in here. And I would walk around and give them all their instructions. And then we go out to the heath and they go and do what they want to do. We turn horses out in the middle here, which is lovely. So nice. Um, we might turn two or three out here together. It's a great um, space, isn't it? And, yeah. and to have the, have all the guys come in and give them in, in their instructions without, yeah. you know, out on the heath, yeah. distractions and horses kicking bring... off and they can at least concentrate on what you're, what you're saying to them. Yeah, and you can bring owners in the middle. And, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Bedford House obviously is one of the premier locations in Newmarket. So it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful yard and obviously um, I was delighted when Charlie had the opportunity to come here. In terms, of the, in terms of the facilities here, it's really got everything you need. The atmosphere is just quiet and quaint and the horses as a result will thrive here and then he's got turnout and horse walkers and rides and access to the heath so it's a it's a fantastic place for him to train and um, you know I enjoy coming here and uh, having a wander around once in a while.